the goods from the wood. Hot damn! I wanted to uh, take this time to put somebody into the Goods from the Woods Hall of Fame. Alvin Charles Copeland was born in New Orleans, Louisiana on February 2nd, 1944, the youngest of three brothers. Al's father left them pretty much immediately after he was born. Uh, His mother struggled to provide for them and his brothers, and uh, his grandmother and great aunt helped to raise them. The family eventually ended up living in the St. Thomas Public Housing Project in New Orleans, relying mostly on welfare. According to Al, quote, I'll never forget being poor. I know what it is, and I don't want it. Uh, in 1960, at the age of 16, Al dropped out of high school and lied about his age to take a job at Schwegman's Supermarket in the Gentilly neighborhood of New Orleans. He's just like you. <laughs> As a soda <laughs> jerk. Wow. Is that like bootleg Wegmans? Like Schwegmans? Schwegmans, yeah. That sounds gross. It sounds like <laughs> dick cheese. <laughs> Schmegma? Uh, he then went to work for Tasty Donut, a donut chain partially owned by his brother Gil. And in 1962, Al sold his car and used the money to help buy a Tasty Donuts of his own. Which which, by the way, Tim Limbrick brought us donuts. You fuck yeah, he did. Well, well, we get to talk about donuts for yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, after 10 years in the donut biz, Al noticed that the KFC across the street was doing better than him. And uh, they had more business. And so in 1971, he opened Chicken on the Run in Araby, Louisiana. <laughs> And after a disappointing year of sales, Al went back to the drawing board, adding cayenne pepper to his chicken breading. And it was also during this rebranding and retooling process that Al saw Gene Hackman in the movie The French Connection playing a hardened New York City detective named Jimmy Popeye Doyle. Then when Al reopened the restaurant in 1972, he called it Popeye's. Love that chicken from Popeye's. That's Dr. John, man. He did that uh, after only... (laughs) It's so much better than the baby back ribs. (laughs) (laughs) That's a monster. Did he do that one, too? (laughs) No. Oh, okay. Just swimming in jingle money. Oh, dude. Yeah. Well, hey, Barry Manilow did the uh, uh, State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Really? He did. I did not know that. He was a jingle man before he wrote the songs that made the whole world sing. After only five years... Popeyes was franchising, and by the end of the 80s, Al had hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, So he purchased a three-story mansion on Lake Pontchartrain in Metairie, Louisiana. The house had 25 rooms, an indoor pool, and a fully equipped gym. Al had two boat houses for five boats nearby, and in the garage, he had two Rolls Royces, a Jaguar, a Maserati, a Lamborghini, a purple Porsche, and a Cadillac stretch limo. And Al spent his money on his hobbies, uh, which included powerboat racing. In 1984, he bought a 50 foot Cougar catamaran with 2,800 yeah. horsepower <laughs> at the name. Al named the boat Phenomenon uh, <laughs> after his favorite Jim Travolta movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it cost six hundred thousand dollars. It could reach speeds Jesus. of approximately one hundred and thirty miles per hour. <laughs> and for the, for those of you that this that is what it looks like, we'll put this up on our Twitter. That's Jesus. phenomenon. Yeah, uh, yeah, with the Popeyes it looks like logo. Like something out of a, a, a mean, Bond movie. Oh, he, oh, he is a Bond villain. We're getting there. Oh yeah, no. And if you if you haven't watched this on ESPN two at like four in the morning, <laughs> powerboat racing, powerboat rules. racing rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are just like they look like mattresses going across the water, <laughs> one hundred and thirty miles an hour because they're so like square and flat that um, they don't even resemble boats they look like you know <laughs> spaceships yeah. or whatever uh, <laughs> so it, it could reach 130 miles per hour this was Jeez. enough to, for Al to set the American Power Boat Association world speed trial record for that year throughout his life Al was known to pilot phenomenon at nearly full speed past other expensive mansions on Lake Pontchartrain leaving a 100 foot geyser of water in his wake rooster tail <laughs> yeah dude just a fucking woo <laughs> and if it, and if it, for us wrestling, all, all the wrestling fans that are listening, uh, if you listen to Powerboat, watch Powerboat Racing, usually announcing a lot of those Powerboat Racing events, Stan Lane from the Midnight Express. Wow. So, yeah, sweet Stan. Uh, and so Whatever. Stay on amazing. brand. Stay on brand. <laughs> no. So Al recalled... ProWrestlingTees.com. ProWrestlingTees.com slash the good spot. Uh, Al recalled that when he was a child, his mother was always too poor to afford Christmas lights. And so the family <laughs> would drive around rich neighborhoods in New Orleans to see the lights. 
And now that he was fucking loaded, Al decided to go ape shit on Christmas. Uh, he started decorating his house uh, with lights as a hobby in the 70s. This gave way in the 1980s to a yearly local spectacle when hundreds of thousands of New Orleanians began coming to Al's lakefront mansion in Metairie every year when Al transformed the house into a Disneyland-like castle for Christmas. I like how this guy is like, I'm never going to forget being poor. Dude, <laughs> it's just all, instead of helping people, he just yeah. wastes all his fucking money. Doing I'll have so many shit. lights, you'll see. Oh, yeah. get this. All right, so uh, his Christmas decorations included a white peace on earth banner that stretched across the entire front of the mansion 10,000 white roses an 18 foot illuminated snowman a 26 foot tall Rudolph and Santa sleigh set 14 foot stars above the house dozens of massive toy soldiers a snow machine a house sized teddy bear a house sized raggedy Ann Four Christmas trees spinning upside down. <laughs> what? How? Not to mention the literally millions of lights that covered every palm and evergreen tree on the property and spelled out the word Merry Christmas, y'all, on the grass. <laughs> The display was so bright that pilots landing at Louis Armstrong Airport began pointing out Al's house to passengers flying into New Orleans on commercial <laughs> jetliners around Christmas time. Uh, Al would also have Christmas music blaring from huge PA speakers set up on the mansion's mini balconies. Uh, this went on from Thanksgiving until New Year's every year for 13 years before a neighbor finally sued when he became trapped in his house due to traffic. Oh. <laughs> so I get all those things except for the white roses. Like... <laughs> I did. How is that a Christmas thing right there? How is the uh, upside down Christmas? <laughs> that was yeah. the craziest <laughs> one. I was like, how is, is this even like Salvador possible? Dali? What's are going you, on? Are you on cocaine right now <laughs> planning this out? <laughs> Sounds like it. My world is upside down. So. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like, just like a being fuck one of, you almost. I like, mean, imagine being one of his, his neighbors. <laughs> yeah. You're just getting like... You know, it'd be like stadium lighting through your windows oh, yeah. and every it's, day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah. like them trying to get Noriega out of that room, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's just like blasting Mannheim steamroller, just like <laughs> at high volumes because Hell those yeah. high pitched like synthesizer <laughs> noises would just like break glass. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So oh I'm surprised God. he didn't just hire Jerry <laughs> Reed to sing Christmas songs the entire time. <laughs> uh, in 1989, Al decided to crush KFC by buying Church's Chicken. Uh, oh, I didn't know it was a. Uh, they're this, they're under the owner. same company. Uh, this turned out horribly. Uh, by 1991, Copeland's company was in default for over 400 million dollars. Copeland declared bankruptcy in April of 1991. In October of 1992, the company emerged from bankruptcy as AFC. America's favorite chicken is, uh, is their company. Although Copeland lost Popeyes in the bankruptcy, he retained the rights to Popeyes recipes and spices through his diversified food and seasoning company. Popeyes has had to continue to license the seasonings, recipe, and techniques from DFNS for a yearly quote unquote spice royalty. So that's where his money is coming in. He declared bankruptcy, got kicked out on his ass, but he still owns the spices, so he's still got tons of money coming <laughs> in. Royalty. Fucking genius. So he's they, wait, he's they, a businessman. He's they, got like shell corporations. He doesn't... His, his $400 million in debt and he just walked away from it and he's still got money from cayenne I'm, pepper. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm confused about how they can't just add in cayenne pepper to their own fried oh, chicken. It's, well, the, it's, it's got, the amount. It's the <laughs> amount. It's the milligrams. It's oh, the... Yeah. God. And they eventually did buy it out in 2014. But, uh, yeah, but... Uh, so all in all, Al... <laughs> Did uh, he keep the power boat in the bankruptcy? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, oh, he good. still kept it. Pretty oh, much good. everything. He lives good. in it now. Yeah, yeah. This was that's why you get an LLC. You know, yeah. yeah. yeah they can't take your power. You can't take my power boat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Al had a, a, a penchant for marriage. Uh, all in all, he would have four wives and four divorces. But as the old saying goes, it's really the third wife that you remember. Uh, everyone knows that saying. Uh, on October 17th, 1990, Al married his receptionist, Luann Hunter. Uh, this well, is, a lucky lady. Yeah. yeah. This would be wife number three. Uh, though they were married in a private ceremony in Las Vegas, this apparently was not enough for Al. They decided to go bigger, and on Valentine's Day, 1991, Al and Luann held their now legendary public wedding uh, at the uh, New Orleans Art museum or the new orleans museum of art 600 guests were in attendance they got married under a nine foot tall portrait of marie antoinette <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bride carried a bouquet of uh, pink heart-shaped anthuriums and her bridal train was 15 feet long 
The ceremony lasted less than 10 minutes. After the ceremony, guests were ushered outside where Cool and the Gang was already playing. Hell yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's too hot. I do. And, and shelter. I, I guarantee you, I worked at a wedding venue for five years. I guarantee you, they're already in the middle of ce- either celebration or like, we are family or something. Those are the wedding songs. They, oh, yeah. they play them at every single wedding. Yeah, they, uh, they try to get a jungle boogie in there. They're like, no, play the na na na. They're like, that's not us. Uh, so. Uh, it was then that the Popeye's company helicopter, known as the Chicken Chopper, flew low over the museum and dropped thousands of rose petals on the wedding guests. After <laughs> nightfall... A- this sounds like a, a southern fried version of the <laughs> wedding from November rain. <laughs> <laughs> After nightfall, a 20-minute firework display lit up the night, culminating in the grand finale, where a firework exploded into a giant heart in the sky over New Orleans, and it Whoa. spelled out the words, Al... I will love you forever, Luann. <laughs> How the fuck do, do they do that? that fuck if I Man, know. So I this wish is I her had. idea then. Well, I think it's his idea, but he's just, you know, he's, he's putting words in her mouth, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> he has $600 million. Dollars. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, wait, Not I nearly that big. I, Jesus. I am being misquoted here. <laughs> so, in 1995, Anne Rice published Mimnock the Devil the fifth book in her Vampire Chronicles series. Uh, at the end of the book, the vampire Lestat, uh, who was played by Tom Cruise in an interview with a vampire, sees his reflection in the window of an abandoned car dealership on St. Charles Avenue. Upon seeing his reflection, Lestat says, let me pass now from fiction into legend. Turns out that abandoned car dealership was a real place in a very genteel and old-timey neighborhood in New Orleans, very close to Anne Rice's house. And uh, in February of 1997, Al purchased the former Mercedes-Benz dealership and opened up Straya. Al called Straya a, quote, California Creole Grande Cafe. Uh, which, <laughs> which, <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> It's a big, it's a big coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah. Grande Cafe. <laughs> it's a medium-sized coffee shop, uh, which served, <laughs> which served things like tuna sausage and fried oysters, Rockefeller pizza. Two things I didn't know were things. That's what people what? in the South thought people in California eat all the time. I was gonna say it sounds to me like a fancy Chili's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Luann decorated the outside of Straya by painting a, the building an electric peach color and covering it with neon lights, hundreds of mirrored silver stars, a star-shaped bar, gigantic indoor metal palm trees, and several golden panther statues with diamond-studded collars. Nice. <laughs> so here's a uh, here's a photo of uh, of what it looked like. I'll so put this, this on our ba- oh, this I'll put this oh on our God. Twitter. Oh man, I wanted to see this, a picture. This, of the it looks like a it looks, so this like, is, this it looks is like a double-decker Johnny Rockets. <laughs> Does yeah, this, like this is like a cocaine themed restaurant. It really is. <laughs> the Panthers thing is my favorite. It's just oh, like yeah. how Scarface Tony Montana can we make? The, I'm sure there was a the world is yours a globe <laughs> spinning in the middle of it in a fountain. So uh, this enraged Anne Rice. She took out a full page ad in the New Orleans Times Picayune on the Friday before Fat Tuesday, saying, "Quote: The humblest flop house on St. Charles Avenue has more dignity than Mr. Copeland's monstrosity." Uh, after the ad ran, Al claims that he went to Anne. Rice's house to find out why she was trashing him but was turned away quote it floored me he said of the advertisement i said what in the hell is this i'm not going to be embarrassed and insulted like this i need to fight back al responded with a two-page ad and a four-page civil lawsuit for libel and defamation of character in copeland versus rice he argued that rice's ad had subjected him to quote contempt hatred ridicule and humiliation quote i think that this is the best looking building on st charles avenue he said in an interview (laughs) And then he went on to basically taunt Anne Rice by saying, I've got your vampire and I'm going to keep it (laughs) because in the book he disappears into this like car dealership into the mirror. So he's Uh, like, technically, I own your stupid vampire. So at Mardi Gras that year, Anne Rice rode in a limousine and hurled gold spray painted rubber rats out of her window, which many interpreted as a dig. And Al, Al, for his part, rode on top of a float wearing a necklace made of garlic and holding a wooden stake. (laughs) Jesus. I hate rich people. Yeah, I know. I fucking can't stand them. (laughs) Uh, 
As weeks passed, the public opinion shifted out of Van Rice's favor in a poll by the Times Pick You and proved that the readers sided with Copeland three to one. All that buzz ended up helping business for Straya because during the height of litigations, the place was so overbooked that guests could expect a two to three hour wait just to be seated. <laughs> so people were just like going there. Yeah, just, I'm not just doing, like a fuck you to Anne I'm not Rice. Doing that. <laughs> <laughs> to get a fried oyster pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Stra- Straya's one and only Yelp review is from 2005. Quote, Straya is another mistake by Al Copeland. <laughs> Blending the worst of California "quote unquote" cuisine with more often than not a lot of butter. I've never, I've lived in California for a while, and I've never had a tuna sausage. I know, yeah. like <laughs> that exists. Apparently, it sounds horrible. Yeah, Eventually, the judge threw out the suit. Al accepted defeat. And this is the best part, as a uh, hilarious fuck you, invited Rice to a free meal at Straya. So that was, he was like, you know what? You win. Come have dinner at my place you hate. <laughs> um, so, uh, you think Michael Keaton will, will play uh, Copeland <laughs> in a movie? And oh, like, I hope so. Yeah. I, this I, guy I needs hope, his own story. Oh, I hope this gets a movie so bad. Uh, so Luann, uh, the third wife, files for divorce in 1999. Uh, the divorce's judge, uh, Ronald Bodenheimer, who had received huge campaign contributions from Copeland in the past, later pled guilty to promising uh, custody favorable to Copeland in return for a possible seafood contract and other benefits, which included free drinks and apps for his kids at Copeland's restaurants. <laughs> so this judge was thrown in jail and disbarred because his kids wanted free mozzarella sticks at the Straya or whatever. But that's like the most positively Louisiana thing ever, <laughs> like <laughs> level of corruption. It's it like something, it sounds like something that like, I don't know that they would say about Huey Long or something. Oh, like this that, guy yeah. is the Huey Long of chicken. Yeah, he's the Huey sure. Long of chicken. <laughs> Bodenheimer stated at one point that Copeland told him, quote, we support you because you're the kind of guy who does the right thing. And the right thing is to keep me and my son together. <laughs> uh, slit him a plate of gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll do that. Right. I think you know what to do. Uh, one of Copeland's lawyers was disbarred for failing to report a felony, and he and the judge both went to jail. Copeland was never formally charged with participating in the conspiracy. Uh, back in 1993, uh, Al Copeland made an unsuccessful bid to attain a riverboat casino license. Uh, oh, this guy is the <laughs> fucking man. <laughs> These, yeah, he is. So he didn't get the license. The successful bidder, Robert Gudry, a tugboat millionaire, <laughs> which... I read that. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, Later confessed under sworn testimony that he had bribed the governor to secure the license. After the revelation, uh, Goudry was ordered to pay a $3.5 million restitution in January of 2001. In December of 2001... Al and his fourth wife were celebrating their one-year anniversary. <laughs> this guy loves getting married. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so they're celebrating their one-year anniversary at this uh, at Morton's Steakhouse in New Orleans uh, when they encountered Guidry. The two were seated at tables near one another. Someone started talking shit. Probably Al was just like, you know, heard you had to pay three point five million dollars. You dumb fuck. Like <laughs> they were just like both of them claimed that the other party started it but that sounds like the kind of insult he would use <laughs> right right like, you know so they're both sitting there and uh someone starts talking shit and eventually the two parties just started brawling <laughs> so his table starts fighting gidry's table uh during the melee al was punched in the face and he fell into his wife who was then also knocked down the gidry party went to jail the copelands went to the hospital <laughs> how old is he at this point <laughs> he's in his 60s i think I heard, <laughs> I heard <you> lost litigation <laughs> but <butthorn. laughs> I'm going to kick your ass. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah. It would be funnier that this is happening at a really fancy restaurant. At a Morton Steakhouse. Steakhouse, These two people. So, like, some of the things I read, like, after this came out in New Orleans, people, like, for months were like, I want to sit at the table where the fight happened. Like, it was a thing. (laughs) Good publicity right there. Yeah. Uh, In 2002, Al Copeland got into comedy. Uh, God. Al Copeland investment. I, hate, I keep hating this guy more. <laughs> Does he run for governor or what? No, no. Al Copeland Investments bought the improv. Whoa. Uh, and uh, created five new improv comedy clubs Irvine, San Jose, Brea, Ontario, and Pittsburgh. I take back everything I said. I love please you, Al me. Copeland. Oh, man, please book me. <laughs> <laughs> they all, he also uh, renovated and relaunched the original Melrose Club in 2002. Ah. Uh, in 2007. Uh, and this is where the, the story gets gets sad. Copeland was diagnosed with a rare malignant tumor of the salivary glands. He went to Europe to receive experimental treatment and to, quote, get right with Jesus. Al reached out to Pope Benedict XVI 
Keith and offered him millions of dollars to accompany him in his pilgrimage to the shrine at the Grotto of Lords. Uh, the Pope was indisposed, but he did get uh, to go to the shrine with the Pope's next in line, Monsignor Christopher Nalti. So that's pretty good. Uh, Alco- hey, Benny. Pope Benny. <laughs> hey, man. I got spit cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was too much flavor in my chicken. <laughs> um, Don't uh, be a dill hole and yeah. take me over to Lord's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for the plane, stupid. Just do it. <laughs> Let me wear your hat. Um, <laughs> Don't cross me. Ask Ann Rice. <laughs> I'm going to bring my fifth wife, too. I hope that's yeah, cool. That's my favorite part is he's been married so many times, and he's very Catholic. Can I buy me one of them indulgences? <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of what this was. Yeah, it was trying to buy an indulgence from the Pope. Uh, so you Never responded to that boat pick I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pope. Let's go on a ride on Phenomenon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just taking the Phenomenon down the Tiber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, man. Bet you never seen the Vatican like this <laughs> at 130 miles an hour. <laughs> no, I won't use kilometers. Um <laughs> Uh, Al died on Easter Sunday, 2008 in Munich, Germany. Thousands of people attended Al's funeral in New Orleans. Mourners were handed checkered flags uh, in honor of his racing hobby to wave as funeral procession came by. Al's body was driven down St. Charles Avenue right past Anne Rice's house. That's hilarious. In a, a big gl- fuck you. In a glistening bronze casket aboard a horse-drawn hearse with oval windows, a jazz band walked alongside playing Frank Sinatra's My Way. Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> of course. He's one of those kind of guys. Every fucking rich bro loves <laughs> My Way. Um, Al's mausoleum had four Greek columns on the front and a bronze double door with room for 14 caskets. Uh, as a final fuck you, on the day of the funeral, the mausoleum was adorned with rose petals and... Christmas lights. The Chicken King's favorite number was 11. So uh, after the service ended, 11 white doves and 111 gold and white balloons were released as the jazz band played the Love That Chicken from Popeye song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought the coda of it of the story was going to be that Nick Cage spent seventy million dollars <laughs> buying that mausoleum. Bought the mausoleum <laughs> uh, on just fe- on a lark, you know, just like I'll buy it. You know, on February first, twenty seventeen, Restaurant Brands International bought Popeyes for one point eight billion dollars. <laughs> so. That's uh, that's Al Copeland and Damn, his seven ex wives are really <laughs> rich Dude, right now. I, I forgot to write down. It's like in the, all the obituaries, it's like he is survived by I think like <laughs> nine nine children and like four ex wives and like thirty grandkids. Like it's fucking insane. But anyway, uh, Al Copeland, uh, welcome to the Goods from the Woods Hall of Fame. You fucking crazy asshole. <laughs> <laughs>